Uh, first of all, thank you all for coming. Uh, it's great to see you guys here. Um, my name is Derek Sakamoto. I'm a senior user interface designer on Hearthstone. And um, I'm here to talk to you about how we went about creating an immersive user experience. Uh, really quick bio, um, I've been at Blizzard for a little over 12 years now. Um, my first job was on World of Warcraft, designing the UI for that. Um, I worked on Vanilla to Wrath of the Lich King. And um, after six plus years of that, um, it was time for a change for me, so uh, I was fortunate enough to, to be able to move on to Team Pegasus, which in turn became Hearthstone. Yay, right? Um, so for the next 30 minutes, um, I'm going to talk, talk to you about some of the high-level um, ideas and principles that guided us to get Hearthstone where it is today in terms of UI and game. Um, so number one is finding your seed. Um, let's get physical. And UI gets to sit at the big kid's table. So um, finding your seed, what am I talking about? To me, the seed is like a muse or like a, it's like an image or a movie or a song, something for your team that they can all look at and understand the direction that your game is going to go in. So um, before I show you our seed, um, I'll show you what it, Hearthstone was like before we had a core idea to work from. And um, as a warning, people outside of Team 5 have not seen these images, and maybe a lot of people on Team 5 have not seen these images just because um, the team is growing. So I introduced to you Warcraft Legends. Um, this is a build called Fire and Ice, and this was the build that got us greenlit. And I think at this time we had maybe the Rogue and the Mage, and then Warlock was still a work in progress. But clearly this is not um, what we wanted you know, for, for Hearthstone. Another idea we had was um, having a world map where you unlock, you travel across Azeroth, Azeroth unlocking regions and zones, doing um, single player quests and, and content to unlock them. And this is actually a screenshot of our Flash prototype. We created the whole game in Flash first, and um, this was all working. We had adventures that worked single player, and those were all done by Ben Brode, I think. And here we go. This is a um, the pre-alpha visual target for our game. And I think everyone's pretty happy that we didn't hit this target. Um, it just has no life. It looks like Tron, and there's, it's super complicated, right? This, this is not what we wanted for our stuff. And there's a bunch of other stuff that we did, you know, for single player. There's books. There's crazy, weird 3D cards. There's hologram cards. Which I'm, I'm just glad I have a job after this stinker. Uh, Hearthstone in the forest, you know? This mock-up had me stumped. Um, <laughs> met, eh? uh, and this was matchmaking. And then um, this is a real gem. Uh, we knew that when we were doing our matchmaking, we didn't want to have a screen with a counter going up, you know, just counting, searching for players or whatever. So I kind of went too far the other way, and this is what we ended up with. Hero, by fire be purged. Matched. Power to the forsaken. You go and do battle, Fight. right? Pretty awesome, right? Uh, so let the record show that the path to Hearthstone as it is today was not obvious or clear to us. Um, so this is why you need a seed. Otherwise, you're just running around in the bushes, right? You're just out in the weeds doing whatever. And um, this video was created by one of our 3D artists, and it was a result of a super long meeting between me and the artist, just trying to figure out what, what could we do, you know, what, what, would, what would be our um, vision. And so here's this box, you know, you zoom into it, there's a world map, there's zones to choose from. Um, you choose your hero, and it rips open the map, and you zoom down into this crazy world where people are battling, right? It makes it feel like it's alive, there's other people there with you. Um, until you find your match, bam, like that, and then you zoom out, and then you're on the game board. And um, that's not really Hearthstone, it's kind of Hearthstone today, but um, I think this really gave us something to latch on to, like this could be something, you know, this is pretty neat. Um, and so that's why you need to find your seed. And once this box, was kind of, box idea was established, um, it kind of grew roots into the team, into the team's minds and hearts and um, it grew strength and was able to grow up into this, big, into this tree, and it branched out and created all kinds of different fruits, which I'm about to show you. So this is our box if you haven't seen it, if you haven't played our game. And once we had that, we had a framework for um, what we wanted to do with our UI. You know, it feels like maybe a, a jewelry box or a music box or something, and it came, became more obvious about how this stuff was gonna work. We wanted little trays and little things like keys that would kind of fit in that environment. You know, came up with the making uh, an idea for making lame loading screens like tightening hinges and that kind of stuff. 
And then once we had this box, it was always sitting on the table. And we were kind of, one day we got to thinking, where is this table, you know? Um, and we decided, well, maybe it's in an inn or a tavern, and that's something like that. And once we had that idea, it kind of just created another like burst of creativity. So this is like our splash screen for mobile. Um, this is the loading screen. It's like you're walking into the tavern, pushing open the doors, and there's a really warm, inviting glow coming in. Um, except for when you know the servers are full, and then there's like a sign outside. It's like tables full, but um, that was pretty cool. And then here's the key art. Um, we informed the key art, you know, but uh, in turn, the, the artist who did this really fleshed out the world and the context of playing Hearthstone in the world of Warcraft. And it really got us excited, because that's, that's cool, right? And this is um, something that was really awesome. Like, this seed was strong enough that we were able to give it to a third party, and they were able to fully realize that tavern as the BlizzCon final stage. And that thing is incredible. And we're still trying to figure out how we can chop into little pieces and get in the office. But so far, so far, no dice. Um, this doesn't really have anything to do with anything, except that um, a lot of us either worked on WoW or big WoW fans, and our game was inspired by WoW, and then it kind of went full circle, and now it's inside of WoW, which is really cool to us. Um, so the obvious question. Having a CD, that's awesome, right? That's great. But how do you find one, you know? That's, that's, the, real, that's the real question. And uh, having done so, um, I have no idea. I mean, but I can tell you kind of how we went about searching for this. Um, in the beginning, we started out with this really awful flat parchment garbage. And we, then we decided, well, this game should probably be 3D. And we want it to be more physical. Um, as a side note, this mock-up was called Simon Says, I think. I don't know. Uh, and then we knew we wanted more magic as well. And then on top of that, we wanted to layer some charm, which is kind of one of our things. And then finally, we kind of said, well, let's really make it feel valuable and feel constructed. And this is kind of where we ended up. So finding your seed. Um, the path to your seed is never direct, unless you're super lucky or a super genius or something, which we're neither. Um, you should actively look for it early in, in your project, um, just because it'll make the rest of things go so much smoother. Because um, it, it just makes everything better. It makes everything fit, fit and feel like it's one thing. Um, and I think, I think you must find it. If, if you want to have a shot and having your game be something special and have a, have a true vision, uh, I think you need to find it. Uh, okay, section two, let's get physical. What the heck does this mean? Um, into development, we had been doing 3D UI, and um, I took a step back and was thinking about what the trends were in UI development at the time. It looks like everything is moving to flat UI design. You know, everything is really slick, really smooth and just completely 2D. I mean, it's completely um, maybe two-tone or something like that. And um, once we really s started thinking about it and thinking about what was right for our project, um, we kind of just embraced it. We're like, dude, let's get physical, you know? Physicality is, is, could be big for us. And um, I have no idea if this age range is right or not, but... Um, so um, this idea of physicality really started to um, trace roots through all of our project and uh, influence things in expected ways and some unexpected ways. So it makes things feel valuable. You know, these are objects people can relate to, um, the materials people can know whether they're worth something or not because they're gold and gems and these kinds of things. And it's important for us because as a free-to-play game, we really want to respect, you know, players' time and money that they spend and give them things that um, feel really good. And being a card collecting game, the core experience is opening the pack. So a lot of us, as we, we had, we collected cards as kids, and there's something about opening a pack of cards, right? There's the crinkle, the foil, there's the smell when you open it, and um, we kind of used the tools we had, which are visuals and sound, to try to replicate that joyous of an experience, you know, something that cool. Um, another thing is that this physicality um, unifies the experience. I'm going to show you a couple screens. Oops. This is like our announcement screen for next Ramus. Um, this is just our matchmaking spinner. And then this is our store. So you're selecting cards and the store moves around. And um, 
these are all different UIs and they live in different planes, but uh, I think having them all be physical and move in the same similar ways, like there's a lot of bounce going on, there's a lot of over rotation kind of things, makes them feel cohesive whether the player realizes it or not. Um, here's an unexpected, semi unexpected one. It's a happy accident with touch, in that um, Hearthstone was supposed to be uh, the main platform was desktop, and it would be nice if we got into tablets, but it was not a sure thing by any means. And so when we designed things like the cards, they would tilt as you drag them around and they swoosh, and when you tap the board, like dust flies up, all this kind of stuff. Once we translated it to touch, it was like a little bit magical to me anyways. And for me, that's the best way to play the game is with your finger actually moving around these pieces and it feels like you're part of that world. This is kind of a selfish one. It's, it's fun to work on this stuff. A couple of us um, like to, to make things, like one guy whittles, I like to do some woodworking on the side. Another guy is into like, World War II stuff where it's old and you can just feel the construction of it. And for us to be able to geek out on that while we're building stuff is really fun. And this is kind of a big one. As a card, collectible card game, you, you really need to have this over, over the shoulder appeal, appeal, which is that if someone's walking by and they see your game being played, you know, they need to be interested and be like, oh, maybe that's cool, maybe that's something I should try. As opposed to, um, you know, it's like this Tom and Jerry stuff, but. Um, as opposed to being, seeing all these words and numbers and just being kind of turned off by the whole thing up front without really getting a, giving it a chance. Um, this one is also in for selfish reasons. Now these are our click board clickables. These are things to fidget with while you're playing the game. Our 3D guys do a crazy job on these things. Um, and I included this particular one because uh, my two-year-old almost every night asked me to play Hearthstone. And what he means by that is load up this board and launch that rocket ship. <laughs> so uh, that's why that's in there. So um, another cool unexpected thing is that fans have embraced it. You know, once if you design these things to be physical, it's kind of not a big leap to see that they could be brought into the real world. And I think fans are really starting to connect with it. And once they build these things, it really jazzes us up and you know, gives us, makes us excited because these are things we designed, but people are actually realizing these things for themselves. So we have cakes, you know, we have um, wooden boxes, we have this thing, which, I mean, it's a play piece, but it's cool that he was excited to make it, let's just say that. Uh, there's wallets, and then this cake really takes the cake, if you know what I mean. Like, I want one of these at my birthday. And then this is the holy grail, right? This is the box, and I think everybody wants one of these things. This thing's awesome. So this image is terrible, terrifying. I, I included it because our because Ben Brode hates it. Uh, it makes him feel really oogie. Um, so taking the stance on physical UI, you know, doing this, um, it's not all roses. There's definite downsides to doing it. Um, but I think if you are aware of the downsides and you have answers and and reasons for why they're okay, I think um, it's 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 good to do these things. So number one, it's hard to expand. On the left side of that screen, there's um, our nine heroes, and it's like, what happens if we add another one? I don't know, right? Um, but our stance on this is that um, it's finely crafted. Everything has its place, and we tend to design for now. And what that means is, we have tight deadlines. We gotta, we can't, you know, try to foresee everything in the future and make it expandable in all different ways that may or may not happen. So we design for now. And that's why things try to, we try to make things have their own little homes. And um, we do have this tradition on the team of screwing over our future selves. Um, we say, oh, what about this thing? Well, future Derek will figure it out. He'll be smarter by then, right? And obviously this time comes around and we go, dang you, past Derek, you're such a jerk. Like, and that happens all the time, we're just always cursing our past selves. Uh, another downside is that it's very resource intensive to create. Um, this is our, just our collection manager. This is like two years of my life, which is awesome. Um, but these are all the things that we go through to try to get to where we are, you know? And it, it may not seem obvious when you look at it, but it's, it's a tough road to get there. And um, the argument to this is that our game is UI. We don't have huge virtual worlds and monsters running around. Um, all we have is our board and we have the box. So it's, it, it makes sense for us to invest our resources in doing this. Um, this is a big knock against us. This, is, this screenshot is from Reddit. 
Um, we look at Reddit a lot and are sad sometimes, but um, this issue is not the most efficient navigation. And so for this example, it takes a ton of clicks to do something that maybe should be a lot more straightforward. And our answer to this is that we generally design for flavor over efficiency. We designed this box to fold open, the drawers to slide around, all for you to have a sense of place of where you are in this box. You can't instantly jump from place to place because we feel that that kind of disconnects you from the experience. However, uh, when things are this bad, um, this is gonna even get worse when we go to, to phone because some of these screens need to be moved into separate, two separate screens. Um, we realize this is a real problem we need to solve, so it's something we're looking at. And so it's nice to have um, a point of view, but once um, things start affecting the player, I mean, we have this in the middle of our campus engraved in bronze, um, gameplay first. So this is that, there's definitely times when you need to make compromises. This is a future issue maintained across uh, multiple platforms. We have desktop, tablet, and um, phone in the future. And I mean, desktop and tablet are pretty similar, which is good, but phone is a complete, complete overhaul. So moving forward, it's gonna be challenging, I think. But um, from a company perspective, it's worth it. You know, it's be take a step back if we can get traction in the mobile space because it's someplace that we should probably be going. So let's get physical. Physical UI is awesome in the right context. There are significant costs of doing it. It's great for touch devices. And um, if, this thing, if physicality is not the thing for you, you should find that trade that you know, most informs your games and really run with it to its full potential because you'll get a lot of good results out of it. Um, this is my final point, which is UI gets to sit at the big kid's table. Uh, and what I mean by this is that, this is not true of every project, but I've seen it where designers come up with a game, they come up with mechanics, and then they're like, let's slap a UI on top of this thing, right? Um, and the other aspect that, of that is, um, I've seen UI be kind of a second class citizen in terms of production, right? Maybe they get a dedicated programmer, maybe not or maybe a dedicated artist. And so um, these are some issues that uh, I think we tried to address. So we didn't want to be off in the corner, you know, eating chicken fingers and hot dogs and spilling milk on ourselves and crying or whatever. We wanted to be at the big kids table. And so it's a testament to our leadership, I think, that UI design was given a fair shake and was given a, you know, parity with game design. And um, one way this works is that Sometimes design would give us very um, loose design, maybe, maybe a couple sentences, and we start doing mock-ups, and then design would come and be informed by those mock-ups. And it was kind of like a canary in the coal mine situation where if the UI was super complicated looking, then maybe design needed to take a step back and see what design was causing those, those complications and maybe removing those or mitigating those problems. So here's just an example, here's our play screen. We used to have a ton of text on this describing the play mode, describing the hero class and their power and all these numbers and we just got rid of it all because nobody reads, right? We know this. Um, and also, we didn't want this screen to be too scary to just frighten people off before they you know, actually play the game. And they would learn all these details through um, playing the game, which is what we want. In this case, we had designed a board and we had the minions that we liked. Um, but only seven fit. So we're like, well, maybe we'll just shrink them down as you start adding them. And I think we all decided that this was not a good idea because it would mess with the physicality of our stuff. When you see things zooming bigger and smaller, it's subtle, but it affects your perception of, of the value of these things, I think. And having just a seven minion limit is, is an interesting play mechanic, I think. Um, our decks used to be 60 cards, and that would mean that the area on the right would scroll three whole pages worth and that's like really hard to keep in your mind at any given time. And it was a deal breaker for new players for sure. And we, so we reduced, reduced the deck size to 30. And even that is quite formidable to um, new players. So we're working on trying to ease that transition as well. This is a pretty old mechanic. Um, the priest hero power used to give the next minion you play plus one attack and plus one health. And so we need to show that on the board. And Clearly, it clutters up the board with more numbers, um, and it encroaches into the minion space. So the hero power has changed. Then you know, that's an example of pushback. And so the, he's, the priest just heals two from anything. And this is very old, but um, this is a concept of the chain, where an idea where in card games you play a card, your opponent can play a card in response to that card, and then you can say, no, 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 I want to play a card in response to that card. And you can see this gets really complicated visually. 
And so it was on the chopping block. And then from a design standpoint, it really just bogged the game down and wasn't cool. So it was gone. That was the design aspect of it. And here's the, the UI pipeline, uh, the game pipeline version of it, where we have access to the same resources as you know, the full game, because we kind of are the game. So here I am, the singular genius, right? This is, this is our team around 2012. Um, I'm just toiling away in obscurity, obviously. But that's, clear, that's not the case. It's, it's a real team effort. I mean, a third of our team, you know, we have a design director, art director, 3D guy, designer, and tech artist, all kind of like working together on UI. And as we expanded recently, this, we're a lot bigger now, um, we doubled our UI design department, which is we got another guy. And, <laughs> and uh, that's Max Ma over there, and he's doing the uh, phone transition for, for us. And then, so now we have even more firepower. It's crazy what we can do with this team like this. And so getting to see the players, uh, I wanted to show you what it, what it looks like to take a feature from beginning to end and who's involved with each step. So here's um, UI design. Um, this is a version of our wireframing. This is about as wireframing as we get. We don't use Visio or anything like that. It's all back of the napkin stuff. Um, so this is UI, de UI design and then programming if we think there's some issue that might come up with our, our initial sketches. And now we're just iterating with UI design and 2D. And then at this point, once design feels like we have the requirements in our mock-up, like they may not look good, but at least they're there, then uh, they usually drop out of the discussion and we just kind of wheedle away um, trying to figure things out. Um, once we get to a point where we look, think we have a good idea, we bring in 3D to look at it and say, is this reasonable? Will these things actually work being modeled out and will they be able to slide under each other and all this kind of stuff? And then here, you'll notice there's a big change between these two. And this is part of our design process where in the middle of mockups, design will f find out, oh wait, we need to show rewards or we need to sh have keys that open and close these things or something like that. So that's why that, that um, mockup changed so drastically. And this is when 3D and programming are coming in to really start doing production on it. And then here's the final deal. This is what it looks like modeled. And then we bring on tech art to do effects and programming. So this is it in motion. Yeah, so that's everybody all working in concert. And I think it, the results are kind of cool. I don't know. So that's how the sausage is made. Um, to recap, yeah? So, find your seed. You know, it'll make your project better and it'll save you a lot of work in the long run. Physical UIs are awesome in the right context. And good things will happen if UI is appear to the rest of development, I guarantee it. So, that's all I have to say. I'd Thank like to leave you with a little bit of uh, our culture. Oh, that was good! Oh, good. Oh, good. So uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I hope you have a great GEC. And I don't know if we have time for questions or comments. Yes. Um, so I was just kind of curious, does uh, Blizzard plan on like kind of releasing any tools to the Unity community, trying to give back to the community, because of obviously their success with Hearthstone? Um, do I need to repeat the question on these, or is that okay? Um, there are currently no plans to allow like modability or anything like that, like kind of what we did on on WoW, um, just because of our audience, and hopefully we're trying to make you know a really tight experience for players that's really highly designed. Um, uh, go ahead. Go for it. How long did it take to find the seed, and how many people were working on the project uh, up until that time? Um, it's hard to say, but I think it was it's definitely left less than 10, and it probably took, um, it's hard to say because we're also bringing people on, but maybe a, a year or so, something like that. Uh, along the lines of how UI design was influencing game design, I'm wondering if there's been Hearthstone UI design influencing WoW UI design, like perhaps with the garrisons or, or something along those lines? Like, uh, are you cross-pollinating? We definitely we have a, a UI group that meets together, and but there's no ex explicit cross pollination. But I think people in the company are starting to look at 
this style and saying that maybe there's something there that we can bring into other games, that's for sure, yeah. You mentioned with the Nax Ramus where you had to change your mock-ups to add like the keys and the rewards. Were there any other points where things really changed the way that you had to approach it because of some element or was it more in the direction of where you could change the priest hero power because the UI needed it to change? Um, it kind of, there's examples of both. I, I can't think of any of the top of my head, but definitely there's situations where we just had, you know, this was the mechanic, so we have to deal with that, you know. Um, I, I can't think of any up the top of my head, but definitely there's sides where, you know, we have to compromise or design has okay. to compromise. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we all know that uh, Hearthstone have a lot of the uh, brilliant visual effects uh, there in the games, but um, I feel that when we move that to the uh, mobile platform, so uh, constrained by the um, power of the mobile device, uh, there is a great decrease on the frame rate. So how do you make the decisions between the trade-off of a great, brilliant, awesome effect with a very smooth uh, frame rate to uh, guarantee the experience? Thank you. Um, this is more of a question for engineers, but... Um, I mean, do you, do you sacrifice some of the no. effects there? No, we don't intentionally sacrifice any effects. We design the coolest effects that we can make, and then smart guys figure out how to optimize it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Thank you. So a uh, successful card game usually creates a, a lot of opportunities for illustrators for doing all these card illustrations. Mm -hmm. And I want to know like, uh, where Hearthstone team find all the illustrations for their card. Do they use existing art resource from the Blizzard library, or are they are actually uh, hiring and giving commissions to other illustrator created new card? Um, it's actually all of those things. We have a, a pool of existing art which we use, and then if there's things not there, then we'll commission either um, external artists or we have um, internal artists who will handle those things. So, um, there's our art director right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so it's all those things. Uh, so I'm another UI designer, so it's cool to hear the big table comment. <laughs> um, when, you, uh, when you guys were early on in the process, um, what, what kind of, or, or did you make any argument of, about the validity of the UI design and that, hey, this is as important as the game design? Uh, you had mentioned like you guys don't have a big world, you know, it's all UI stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so did you make that argument or did you show like data analytics or So else? I was very fortunate in that I had worked with a design director for a number of years on World of Warcraft mm -hmm. and that experience made us really think hard about UI's role in game design and so I think we came to an agreement together on that. I did not have to sell you know, somebody on this idea that that's the case. But um, I think you can look at any kind of board, board game type translation of that. You can make that argument, like this game is UI, you know, it's important. Yeah. And, and maybe, hopefully, maybe Hearthstone could be an example of that, I don't know, you know. I, I would like to think that it could be the case. Hello there. Uh, during the creation and designing the UI, mm -hmm. how much were you locked down with the overall gameplay design? Pardon me, how much? How much, uh, how much were you locked down already with oh. the gameplay design? Um, we were locked down in the, in the fact that it was going to be a, a card game. OK, but, nothing else. But the but, game design but, was progressing the same Yes, way. they're progressing at the same, at the same time. And, they're, and that, like I said, kind of they were informing each other of what this could be. You know, um, Once we started getting into this physical space, then the design started to think differently about you know, how things work, which is kind of cool. One more question? Uh, how much time do you expect the creation of the Hearthstone UI for phones to take? And do you have any planned release date, this quarter, or next one? Um, soon? <laughs> <laughs> next couple months is what I can say. Um, it's, it's pretty far along, and it's looking pretty awesome. So. OK, thanks. Yeah. OK. Um, I think that uh, one more? OK. Uh, yeah, I noticed that you, uh, in Hearthstone, you can't really make anything during the other player uh, turn. Yes. Uh, I wonder if this was like an early game design decision, or if it was like you explained before, also something that was driven by the UI design. Uh, this is not, it was semi-UI, but it's really the designers who um, didn't like that flow of play, because um, you have to pay attention a lot, you know? You have to be, yeah. and you, so, 
it just felt like it wasn't a good flow for us, I think. And once we switched to the idea of these maybe secrets that could trigger yeah. another play, something like that, it just made it, like when it's my turn, it's my turn. You yeah. know, I'm trying to solve a single player puzzle. And I yeah. think that is kind of the appeal of the game. And will we get more deck slot? <laughs> <laughs> Took you this long to get this question? Um, I had to ask it. <laughs> it's, we know it's an issue and we are looking at it. Yes. That's not like a hand wavy answer. It's, it's really something that's on our radar. Okay, that about does it. Thank you so much. <laughs>